Welcome back everybody, this is Robert again and uh, we are once again going to do something with Muse 4 and this time I thought we would do a little bit more freeform uh, taking it from scratch and making a short song uh, using various features of Muse. So here goes, we will start by adding a drum synth and I thought we would use the, the synth that we bundle along uh, with Muse. It's called Simple Drums and it is simple but still maybe a little bit hard to understand what it does but I'll walk it through it. Uh, this is a sample player where it's you can load any kinds of samples, but it's as you can see, it's pretty much done for for drums. So we will proceed, and I prepared some drum samples here, and take that one. Sounds cool. And uh, we just pick a few, we don't need all kinds of drums, just some basics. Want to have something a bit uh, not so nasty. Take the last one. And we take a closed hi hat. the loud side but we can compensate for that pick the first one and then open high hat half open and we can see here these the ones we loaded samples for they are now turned on and seven and 11 are the hi-hats, so I'll lower the volume on those uh, just a bit. Like that, maybe. Leave this window open because we might do some tweaking there later. For now, uh, let's add a drum track. When you have a drum track, you have access to the drum editor. Now I, I drew a part here using uh, the, the draw tool. I press D on the keyboard and, and drew a part over four bars. And I now double click on it so we get into the drum editor. This is uh, what the drum editor looks like. It's a, a typical uh, matrix type drum editor. We will not go through every detail here, but we basically ha basically we have the types of drums here that uh, can be uh, that is usually available with MIDI. Uh, and if we, cl if we click on them, we can hear what they sound like. So here we have the bass drum, and the snare, and the hi hat, and so on. Uh, uh, a quick side note, this can be rearranged and you can delete and add stuff here. Uh, whatever you do, if we back out of this, uh, we can. I usually press escape to get out of the editor, but if you want to leave it running for whatever reason, you can also use the tabs at the bottom. So I click on the arranger and the mid, the drum track if we right click on the track name, we can uh, load and save drum lists. Now I, I didn't make any changes to it, so we can't save it. But if we did, uh, it would be possible to save our version of a drum list. Oh, we go back. And now we want to add a simple beat. Oh, we can do one more thing in the arranger. Uh, when doing drum beats, it's pretty nice to listen to what you're doing. So I'll, I'll click up here in the timeline to move the play pointer. Then we have a blue pointer here. This is uh, 
the locators, the loop locators. So this is actually two lines. Uh, if I uh, con right click over here, we move the right one. Uh, and if I let's see now, if it's is it control? Yeah, if you hold control and press the left and right one, we recently changed that or added that. It sort of make, makes logical sense. So then we can move them around. So now we have uh, created a loop over this. Uh, at least if we click the loop button here. Now if, if I press space, it will play over and over. And if we go back here and we start adding stuff, we can hear what we are doing. So I press D to enter edit mode and uh, we click on the first beat here, a pass drum. Oh, took a while. There you go. But it quickly gets a bit old to add that way. So we can do another way. I uh, went to the arrow clicked on the A key and I selected them all. Now if I uh, hold the control key and drag these, I will duplicate them. And now we have room for two more. I'll drag these two like that. And we can even do the same thing this way. Like that. And let's add some hi hats too. Oh, it's a bit too far removed. Uh, Use the eraser and remove them in place like that. Uh, is that really audible? Oh, I, I used the wrong one. It's supposed to be the closed. If we select them all like that, and then I hold the control key and use the arrows, I can move this around like that. But doesn't, that doesn't sound really that cool. Let's uh, duplicate again. And I'm gonna do a little trick here. You can't hear these now. I move them to a separate one because I want to edit them separately. I'll, I'll stop the playback just briefly. And we will select this these uh, this this lane is uh, instrument and we will click here you can see down here we have uh, the controller view and uh, what we are seeing right now is the velocity for everything that is shown above but we can click on this button if we want all or if we want it per, per note uh, so if i click on this one it will show the one that we have selected and we want this one. I thought we would uh, make the velocity different between the hits. So this one is a little bit louder. Uh, I click on the draw key here or rather I click on, uh, let's see now, this one, line draw with F. I use the F. And we start off, I click here and I can, you see I have a line, throw it like that till the end, uh, approximately linear. Now if we move these and I hold control and arrow up to move them to the same. Now if we look here, we see we have it like this. We'll see how this sounds. The hi-hat is still pretty loud. Let's uh, bring it down a bit. I think 
will probably need to bring that one too. So maybe change one or two of these. We can, I'll just uh, click on one of them to get it focused. Now if I use the arrows, I can move between them. Uh, what if we, what if we, uh, how would it sound if we make this an open? Sounds a bit weird. And maybe we add an extra snare here. Yeah. I wouldn't say that that was uh, exceptionally nice, but uh, it makes sound. So we duplicate this. I uh, just copied and I will paste it here a few times. Now if we remove uh, the loop, we can. Ah, we'll keep playing. Now, what should we do next? Let's uh, add some synthesizer just for the sake of uh, having something. Uh, what if we use uh, the DX7 uh, emulated synthesizer Dexed? And now we add a MIDI track and by default it will be connected to that one. Uh, now I could do the same, use, uh, press the D key to draw here and draw a part, uh, and that will be fine. Uh, we can double click on it and we can go here and edit, but it's editing in the piano roll without having anything to start from. Well, it, it's a little... I might not be the greatest at playing the keyboard, but doing it from scratch, that's that's a bit rough. So uh, I'll remove that one. And we will uh, make sure that my external keyboard is working. Let's see now. Let's see if we can get some sound out of my external keyboard. If we go up here to the settings and the MIDI port soft synths, we can see the list up here is basically a list of all synthesizers that are in the system. It's much the same as the dialog for adding synths. Uh, down here, usable devices and device port assignments. Those are more interesting in this case. Usable devices are the devices that uh, Muse has found on our system. And device port assignments is the way that they are currently assigned in use. For soft synths, uh, you can see that uh, device name and instrument it's it's is the same. These uh, you should probably not uh, play around with them unless you know exactly what you're doing. The ones that are interesting to play around with are the real MIDI devices. In this case, it's the XP MIDI. The one that's connected, uh, I have my external keyboard connected to. So it's the way that MIDI enters my computer. And uh, I have configured this uh, previously. So I think this might even be the default. But it's, it's good to note that there's this setting. The one here. Uh, meaning that, uh, like it says, it's auto connect these channels to new MIDI tracks. So uh, when you create a new MIDI track, uh, this device will be auto connected for channel one. Uh, and this is 
to make it easier to start recording uh, this can be changed but one is, is is usually a good thing my keyboard sends on channel one so if we escape out of this uh, dialog and go to my MIDI track and check here on the input routing you can see the same thing here channel one is configured so this one can send into this track you can also click here to make you, you, you can always enable this device by either clicking more channels or clicking the Omni where all channels will be allowed. Uh, this can be useful for other things, but for just quickly getting away to record, having it set up in the dialog should bring this and it should just work. We'll see now if I bring up the monitor. We will see if we get some noise. I'll click on it. There's some weird noise. We'll uh, bring up the GUI and select something that may be... I don't know what they have so weird. What's this? Ah, who knows what we should pick. Oh my god. Uh, slow 3D pad. Let's uh, I'll close this. And we select this track. And let's, uh, I think I showed this before. Uh, we will record. I selected this track. And when I click this, it will be automatically armed the one that is selected uh, one other thing will happen we will a dialog will pop up that uh, wants us to save this song so we'll just uh, muse demo weird weird and we put it in a subfolder because I, I recommend always doing that so, now uh, record is enabled, arm is enabled on this track. So if I press play here, it will start playing. And uh, then I will just mash some keys on the keyboard. So we get something recorded. that wasn't it beautiful no it wasn't but uh, anyway here we have uh, a few chords recorded uh, let's see if we can do something cool to this we can start by if we play play it again we can go to the uh, other tab here the tab here there's a few settings that are for the entire track and I was specifically thinking about the transpose so uh, I realized that was pretty low uh, so we can transpose it to a higher note if we think that transposing is a bad idea we can go into the track I click on Control A to select everything and I use the keyboard uh, to transpose this C up to the C4 and we get the same thing we can even go further we, we go another octave Like that. Another 
another little thing we can see that we have some uh, extra notes here that probably was due to my um, less than perfect playing so I can use the eraser um, I click on the R button change to the eraser and I remove those like that uh, another thing we can see we have the same kind of uh, controller view down here and these have maximum velocity uh, all through don't know if I have disabled velocity or if I hit hard but we can uh, draw here and make them a bit lower who knows maybe it sounds nicer don't know if this keyboard it should be velocity or, or this synth is velocity sensitive I think it is I'm not sure it is take it really low doesn't seem to be velocity sensitive then it doesn't really matter uh, what should we do we can uh, we can uh, let's do something weird I have still have all of them selected we can uh, click on the script and we select uh, uh, is the speed double we double the speed for these notes. Selected, yes. And I think we will also uh, change to another. Let's see if we can change the uh, patch here. This uh, unfortunately works different for different synths. This one showed all the patches here. Uh, some you have to go into the GUI. sounds is there some that sounds ah, not too shabby or maybe that was the wrong word will I'll use I click on the S key to get the cutter and I cut this part here uh, and let's see now, I think we should should quantize this a little bit. So, and uh, now let's see what happens if we cut this. I'm not sure. Ah, we lost the notes anyway. Move these so they are probably some humanized hum oh, whatever it's called making it sound human uh, that interferes like that uh, then we can duplicate this control C control V control V oh and we have an instant hit Let's do one final thing just to show up some more features in Simple Drums. Uh, there is something called Send Effects here. It can only use a subset of the type of plugins that uh, are available on Linux, mainly, or it's the Ladspa kind of old style plugins. But still, it uh, can be used to quite a good effect. So we, we add a reverb here. And uh, now we enable it. Let's expand so we can see the parameters. And uh, as I recall, this is kind of backwards. To get it all, I want to get only the wet part. It should be at zero for this one. And we make the room a little bit smaller. And if we now, I think I'll 
uh, I don't think I know mentioned the mute and solo uh, parts of we, we, I want to hear only the drums now then I can solo the drums so and we have added effect and I want to have effect on the snare but then we have here we have the F FX send amount for the snare. So I used the scroll wheel on my mouse to increase it. So nice. Maybe some on the hi hat too. Magical. Let's move the solo. Fantastic. Uh, there's probably something else that I was going to sh mention, but I can't remember it now. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.